Hey all, it's me, Ryan. Uh, welcome to my channel, Rai Rai Magai. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. I know it's been a hot minute, maybe almost six weeks. Uh, today is, is Monday, June the 20th, so it, it's been a long time coming, and I missed you guys, so I'm glad to be back at this again. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. It's a floss tube channel where we talk about cross-stitching, uh, knitting sometimes, sewing sometimes, you know, just kind of needle arts in general, crafts in general. We'll just sit back, relax, have some fun, and uh, I hope you enjoy what you see. Um, what's What's been going on with me? I, I've been pretty busy. Work has kept me very busy, and um, project-wise, the month of May, I was focusing on one project for Stitch Mania, and uh, that project is uh, 101 alphabets. Um, if you remember from the last time, I, I, well, I guess we're just gonna dive right into this. My, my last project um, for the month of May was 101 alphabets by Rosewood Manor. And my objective, um, I started this last year, my objective was to do one alphabet a day for all 31 days in the month of May. And uh, 2021, I did okay uh, 2022 this year. Not as good. I think I'm, I maybe got about 20 done. It's, uh, you know, some of them are big, some of them are small. And um, this is, yeah, this is where I am right now. It's, uh, what have we got going on here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm looking at you through the linen so I hope <laughs> I hope you can kind of see where I am right now it's uh, like I said I got about 20 done um, some of them are really tiny like right here uh, some of them are a bit bigger uh, using different colored flosses like over here and you know despite despite everything I had going on I'm pretty pleased with what I managed to accomplish so I, I really can't complain and Honestly, I, I don't know what the whole point of Stitch Mania is. I mean, I like stitching, and if I have time to stitch, I'm going to stitch. Uh, having, I mean, it, it's fun to kind of focus on a project and have an objective, but you know what? I stitched, I'm happy with what I've done, and uh, I don't even know if I'm going to put this away until next year. I may, I may just go ahead and finish my 31 alphabets and, and then I'll tuck it away and we'll, we'll pick it up again on, in 2023, which the time, I mean, is just flying by like crazy. I can't, I can't believe we're already end of June. Um, and uh, yeah, halfway through the year. So a lot of stitching left to do. <laughs> and we've got Christmas in July coming up, so we, we can't forget about that. Sorry, I've my little manic. We're just gonna calm down a little bit. Um we did 101 alphabets. I'm consulting my list here in my little pile. Uh if you recall my last video, or actually in any video, I always talk about the Jeanette Douglas mini bouquets. Uh she's releasing one a month um, for the year 2022. And I've been having actually a lot of fun finishing them in different and unusual ways. And uh, it started with a strawberry and then I did a little um, tea bag satchel. Uh, what else did I, oh, I did the tiny little teeny tiny uh, needle minder. And for the month of April, I was really stuck on something. And th this is what I ended up with. Uh, I'm going to call it just a little storage jar. It's a, it's a mason jar with, uh, I put some padding underneath the lid and I stretched. Can we see that? How does that? I stretched uh, the little mini bouquet for the month of April over top of it. And yeah, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I, I shared a picture on Instagram and I think I had some uh, sewing clips that I used and uh, and now I, I think I'll end up using it as a, an art jar. Um, for, for those of you who might not know what an art jar is or orts, uh, I remember kind of the etymology of the word, but um, 
I, I, I forgot what it was, but it's essentially little snippets of thread that you have left over when you've done um, some cross stitching. You finish up a color and you just kind of keep them in one spot. And then maybe if you're doing a little project that requires some mending or um, I know some people will save these and actually stuff little um, little make little finishes and use that as the stuffing. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way this turned out. And this idea actually arose from kind of a happy accident. Um, what, what happened, again, I was really stuck trying to figure out what to do. And I used the, uh, the ring from the mason jar to kind of, um, when it was still on the fabric, I hadn't cut or, or trimmed it anything. I had no idea what to do. And I was using this ring to kind of gauge you know, oh, what's it going to look like in a circle? And uh, what size am I working with? And unfortunately, the the ring that I was using, it had some residue, uh, kind of almost like a little rusty residue on the underneath side. And it stained the linen. Uh, it, it actually transferred to around my motif. So I kind of didn't have a choice except to do this with it. So I'm not mad at it. I don't hate it. In fact, I, I, I really like it. And I've, I've had quite a few compliments. And uh, yeah, the top doubles is a pink cushion. Super cute. Very happy. Oh, what's next? I've got... Oh, so that was the month of April. Uh, we're already in June, so I had some catching up to do. And so for the month of May, I... Uh, I uh, did this one. <laughs> Let me just zoom in here. Why do I always get the angle wrong? There we go. Uh, that's the month of May. And what was unique or special about this stitch is I, I used a fabric and floss that was actually sent to me um, from a fellow stitcher. Her name is uh, Hillary. And uh, you can find her on uh, at Rustic Rustic Threads Stitching. Uh, she has a Instagram account and a YouTube channel. Uh, very charming, and um, and she was really kind enough to send me some Vicky Clayton hand dyed silks, and uh, I think. Um, the fabric is maybe about 40, 42, 44 count. It was around the 42 count mark. So it ended up producing a really nice size uh, that that I'm, I'm really happy with. I actually started, tr I tried doing over one and mm, not, not so great. <laughs> we go, yeah, you know what? It's, it's almost too small. You lose a lot of the details, the, the fiber, like the thread, ended up pushing the warp and weft fibers apart. So it was getting really crowded and congested. And it wasn't that a uh, great experience. So I switched to over two and perfectly happy with this dimension. What am I going to do with it? I'm, I'm not quite sure yet, but I think I have, uh, I have several options in mind. So, um, so we'll see what we can do with the month of May. And well, we may as well jump into June. So I, I really loved this this floss and the linen so much that I, on the other side, well, on the other piece, I uh, started doing June. I didn't get too far. And uh, this is actually, uh, I remember Jeanette commenting that she really liked this concept of the glass vase. So you can see the water and, um, and the stems through the, through the water and the glass vase. So that, yeah, that was a really nice effect. I'm, I'm looking forward to stitching this up. Uh, again, I don't have any, any end game or any final finish in mind for, for this project. But again, it's the same linen. Unfortunately, I, I don't know what it's called or where it's from. Uh, it seems almost like a raw linen. I don't think that it was over dyed or hand dyed. Um, that just sort of like a natural Tweety linen. And uh, th there was no salvage, so I couldn't even tell if it was Weigart. But the the floss is still the the hand dyed silks by um, by Vicky Clayton. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with this one too. And, and for those of you, I, I remember 
oh, I'm still kind of manic and I, I haven't even had a coffee this afternoon. Let's have some water. Maybe I'm just excited. I finally have a chance to record. There's that. Uh, back to the back to the hand dyed silks. I, I remember in an earlier video, I talked about maybe doing a tutorial to talk about my experience with silk and if people had any questions or challenges around it. And I have to say with with the with the hand dyed silks from Vicki Clayton specifically, it is such a joy to stitch with. It's, um, you know, silk, silk is actually stronger than cotton. And this, this particular floss, where, oh, I've got them right here. This, the, these particular flosses are, it's a fairly high twist floss. And uh, I mean, each, each, thread is two plied, but there's no separating. There's no, there's no dividing anything. You just use it uh, straight off. Well, I guess the skein or the spool, however it comes. Um, like I said, Hillary was kind enough to send all of these to me. So uh, yeah, it's really, it, it really is a treat to stitch with. It doesn't fray very much and well, really much at all. It's very strong. Uh, it really, it really can handle the needle and the linen quite well. And don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to stitch with silk. It's, uh, it was really um, quite a treat to stitch with. Oh, that's a, uh, maybe I'll, I'll come back and talk about this. Uh, if you, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a little teaser video of this. So yeah, I'll, I'll keep this aside and, and we'll revisit that. So that was the month of April, the month of May, the month of June, Jeanette Douglas, mini bouquets, final finish, finish, and a work in progress. So we kind of encompassed three. Um, what's next? Oh yeah, my, my other work in progress, I put this aside for a couple of months. Well month, uh, specifically the month of May, and then I picked it up again. And it is uh, hashtag Rai Rai's first sal. This is, oh, I'll show you a picture first. Uh, this is a Michelle, a Bendy stitchy Michelle Bendy design. And it's a 1844 lady man. And I, as you know, I, I'm just fell in love with this chart. It, it was really so charming and whimsical. And I know many of you are stitching it and, and have really been enjoying um, the, the project. So 1844 Lady Man. Now, where am I? I am, let's put this down. This is where I am today. So last time, I showed you, I probably just finished this little motif here, the sort of arbor or arch with the berries, and then this uh, twee little estate or home with uh, little trees behind it. And now we've got Lady Man, uh, we've got a wonky butterfly, and then we've got a little sun up here. Now, this is, this is the first time I'm stitching a butterfly. And I swear, I've, I've never seen a butterfly like this before. I, I don't know who the person is that stitched this. I don't know if they were on acid. I don't know, you know, I can, <laughs> maybe I'll bring it closer. I can kind of tell that it's a butterfly from the little antenna here on top, the wing shape you kind of get, I can see at the at the bottom here, you kind of have those two fake eyes that that so many butterflies have, and but what the heck is going on with those colors? I I do not have a clue. That that's totally beyond me. Um, but it's done, and the design has another butterfly on the other side, and um, yeah, we'll see. I was actually nervous. This is the fabric that I'm using. It is Jack Frost Seraphim. Uh, 30 something count, 32, 32 count. And for some reason, I don't know why I picked 
to start down here rather than to use the whole the whole width of the linen. Um, you know, I tend to be pretty thrifty or, or resourceful with my linen. And um, yeah, I guess I can have a whole other project here, roughly the same size. Uh, so, so that'll look nice. But I kind of panicked when I took it off the uh, when I took it off my little Q snap and I thought, Oh my God, I'm, I'm going to run out of room. So I kind of did my little grass stitches right across and yeah, I, I'm not going to run out of space. So, so that's good. Yeah. That's, that's been a lot of fun. So Rai Rai's first sell. I know uh, some of you are using that hashtag and thank you very much. I've enjoyed seeing your progress on those as well. Another another whip that I have, whip work in progress, another whip that I have is actually courtesy of my partner. Uh, he gave me a sweet kit for my birthday. Uh, it's called uh, the Gay Agenda Cross Stitch Kit. And, you know, if we're getting reflections, oh, that's not so bad. Gay Agenda cross stitch kit. Uh, this is from Cats in Space and it came as a complete kit. So it, it came with the uh, DMC flosses on cards. It came with the hoop. It came with the linen and it came with a, with a blue felt backing here. And so really, it's a really nice project if you want everything. Oh, and it came with a needle too. So really nice project, everything all contained. And uh, it is done on 14 count Ada and I wanted something a little bit smaller. So I, I started stitching on some Gray's Weigart that I had already had. And uh, this is as far as I got. It's a pretty easy stitch. It's, it's going really quickly. And there are a few changes uh, that, that I'd like to make to it. And um, one of them is uh, the hearts, the hearts surround it. There we go. Uh, it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and it just repeats. I think I would like to introduce uh, the colors from the Progress Pride flag. So that includes uh, the pink, the blue, the white, uh, the black, and the brown. Uh, and I might have to fudge it around a little bit with the spacing, but that should be fine. And um, yeah, so this is this is gonna be my pride project. Uh, the if you <laughs> look closely, what's on the agenda? Be gay. Taco Tuesday. Be gay. Be gay. Super gay. Super gay. Sunday is brunch. And I I actually got stuck. This is this is not a good time in the history of mankind for for many people and um, it seems no one is safe or sacred. And I know that it's meant to be a whimsical design, but right now it feels like the, the only thing on our agenda is to, to stay alive or keep alive. Unfortunately, that, that seems to be the state where we're in right now. So I, I actually kind of had a hard time um, continuing with this. So I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit. I'll, I'll finish the color. I'll finish the gay agenda and uh, I'll leave the actual um, weekly activities out until a time when I feel more comfortable, um, you know, being a little more whimsical. So happy pride. It's, it's pride week. Well, it's pride month um, in many places and in Toronto, I'm in Toronto and uh, I actually live literally just steps away from the gay village. So this this week and specifically starting Thursday to Sunday, it's going to be uh, nonstop um, music and crowds and uh, um, lots of visitors coming in and parades and walks and marches and happy pride if you're watching this. Uh, what's next? Oh. Oh yeah, I, I wanted to show you, I, I said that this fabric was from, leftover from another project. And uh, I, I thought, yeah, you can see me here swatching, <laughs> doing some test swatches. Uh, this was actually for my, uh, you know, let me, let me just pause it. It's just out of uh, range here. So just bear with me one moment while I get it. I, uh, I took advantage of the break 
to get a glass of uh, ice water. It's, it's getting pretty warm here, at least in the sun. So I got my project. Uh, this is my biggest project to date. And it's actually a modern folk embroidery stitch along for the year 2020. And uh, this is not, oh, you know what? The glare is gonna be horrible. Um, this, this is not the final, final finished frame for it. I, I had this frame and I wanted to put it in because I thought it would be nicer to have uh, something to look at rather than have it tucked away under the bed somewhere. So, so this is uh, the nice stitch along. Yay! You know what? Sorry for the reflection. Um, sorry for the reflection. I, yeah, I'm going to talk about it for a bit because it is my biggest project to date. So I think what I'll do, I'll kind of maybe look at it here and I'll share what I'm talking about here. So if, if that's okay with you, uh, if not, just skip forward. Anywho, uh, Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along 2020. A lot of the annual stitch alongs are mystery stitch alongs in that you don't know what it is you're going to be stitching until you get that portion of the pattern for that particular month. And uh, with Jacob, with Modern Folk Embroidery, I, I know for sure 2020 and 2021 were not mystery cells, which sat with me very well. I, I like... <laughs> I like knowing what to expect. And uh, for 2022, it is a mystery stitch along. It's beautiful, by the way. I've been following everyone stitching it. And uh, unfortunately, I can't stitch all the things it's as much as we want to. We can't stitch all the things. So Ellen gave this uh, chart to me for my birthday. And uh, I was already four months behind. I was even longer behind because of... Um, COVID and the closures and lockdowns, we couldn't go do any in-store shopping. So I had to make my decisions about what I wanted to use um, virtually, you know, through online shops. And uh, this is what I decided on. Uh, the The fabric, it's a, it's a gray linen, um, sorry, it's a gray Ada, 18 count from Zweigart. And the floss, I wanted something very different and unique um, because, you know, it's quite a, a it, even though it's a new design, it uses a lot of uh, traditional motifs from different sources. And, and uh, so I wanted something very fresh and bright and contemporary. And I ended up with this uh, kind of a hot neon coral floss, which I don't think is translating very well uh, through the camera. But uh, trust me, it's like electric neon coral, a hot, hot coral. And unfortunately, not a lot of companies kind of do the fluorescent flosses. So I ended up using uh, loops and threads from uh, Michael's carries that line. I, I don't know if it's their house brand or if they carry it exclusively. I haven't seen it anywhere else, but, um, but yeah, so it was part of a neon package from loops and threads. It's 100% polyester, which thank goodness I can tell you this got so grimy doing stitching for, for over a year. Uh, it, I, I really appreciated the fact that I could just dunk it in a bathtub of water with a bit of dish soap and kind of loosen up all that grime. And it, it ironed out really nicely. Uh, the, the challenge, the particular challenge I had with this fabric, though, uh, when I received it in the mail, it, it had a couple of holes in it. So... <laughs> You know, welcome, welcome to cross stitching. So I had to figure out where to place the design or the pattern on the it, the uh, the cloth was much larger than this finished piece. So I had some room to kind of manipulate or decide where I wanted to position it and what motif I wanted to use to cover up the hole. Uh, so I, I think that the, that it was a success. And um, the the interesting thing is since it's not in its permanent home but i have it out i get to look at it and i've noticed i've i missed a few spots here with uh with my stitching um there are a couple of little stars 
uh, that I missed here. Uh, one here, one over here. I made a little difference in the hoof of the deer here. Uh, and, and none of that bothers me so much. I'll, I'll definitely go in and fix the stars though. I, I did make a couple of changes to the border. Um, I beefed up, uh, <laughs> This yeah, I, I beefed up the borders here and uh, this motif, this border here, I beefed up as well. Yeah, that's um, I have to say when you're stitching it, you think, oh, this this is going so well, this is going so smoothly. And and it did go smoothly. It just took a lot, lot longer than I had expected. And, you know, when it's on your hoop or your frame or your cue snap and then you take it off and move it, and you hold it up and you say, is that all I did? Or is that how big it is? Like, I swear, when when I finished this, I looked at it and I said, well, this is nothing more than a placemat. <laughs> and, and then when I was stitching, I thought that it was massive. I, I mean, it could have been the Bayou Tapestry, right? Um, alas, it is not. But Modern Folk Embroidery, 2020 Sal, uh, Family Patchwork Sampler, I think is what it's called. So, well, there's a little diversion for you. Okay, what have we got next? Oh, we've got, we've got some stitchy kindness here. A stitchy kindness, happy mail, um, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a very good friend of mine who insisted on remaining nameless. So no names. Uh, he's he's very kind to me. Work for him takes him all around the world, uh, uh, mostly to, to Europe and and often to Asia, and so he's always um, looking for you know little things to pick up for me. And I I he did happen to be going to Paris, and I did happen to be uh, mentioning a company called Saju. Uh, I showed you the needles that I bought from them um, online. And he he actually ended up, they have a, a shop in shop inside uh, Le Bon Marché. Um, there, Le Bon Marché. And he kind of went a little bit crazy. <laughs> so, and, and I love him for it. I mean, that's so sweet and kind. So I thought maybe I'll, I'll share with you some of the loot that, uh, that he brought back for me. And uh, we've got some beautiful embroidered uh, ribbon with some little pink scissors. Uh, that's, that's really sweet and that'll come in handy for sure with uh, some of the finishes that I have in mind. And um, so you, again, it's, it's not just exclusively needlework or, or cross-stitch that they do. Uh, they have fabrics and, and linens and different threads and some sewing accoutrement as well. And uh, along with the haberdashery. So uh, he, he got me some dressmaker pins how, how are we going to do this here? How about this? There we go, finally. A lot of their branding, their packaging focuses on some archival uh, historical images. And, uh, and I really appreciate uh, that aesthetic. Um, here's another, here's another Book of Needles, both uh, for sewing and for, for cross-stitch. And uh, this, yeah, this is very typical of the kind of things that they do. And, uh, and you can see 40 needles, sharps, blunts, perfect. Says you. <laughs> what else did he get? Oh, I forget already. Um, little package of uh, sewing needles. Uh, this is unusual. This he he actually asked me. He said, "What is it?" I mean, he bought it and he didn't know what it was. And I'll hold it up. There we go. So, dear friend, if you're watching, uh, this is is essentially like a, a thread or bobbin um, where you wrap your threads around when you're working on a project instead of using it off a skein. A lot of people bobbinate their threads. And so here you can kind of do one, two, I guess three, three colors. Um, so suitable for a, a smaller project. Uh, yeah, so this is really cute. She even has a, a backside too. 
That's sweet. And when a chart, um, Ouvrage de Dam, uh, so they, they have a whole collection of historical samplers, of vintage samplers. And uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the designs that they have on offer. It's, uh, there we go, vintage sampler number two. It's essentially a series of uh, beautiful fonts, beautiful alphabets, uh, 178 by 276. I'm definitely going to be stitching this. Uh, I, I love the blue too, so I think I've got a, a couple of nice blues that, that would be suitable for that. So uh, yeah, really, really sweet. It's got the, um, I'm not going to show you the pattern, obviously, but um, yeah, pattern inside. A chart inside, so yeah, that was that was sweet as well. Uh, the the pièce de résistance, since it's French, <laughs> uh, we can speak French, right? Was this? What is it you say? Well, it's a little box. This I actually was thinking about shooting from overhead, but you know what? I'm kind of lazy. That's okay. Uh, there's two tins inside. Isn't that cute? Uh, so we're going to assume that this is like a um, Marie Antoinette. And this is uh, a King Louis. Oh, a little, there we go. There we go. So what's inside? These sweet little tins. Just pop it open. You see, isn't that cute? They're little cocoons of thread. Little cocoons of thread. I think there's about a dozen different colors. Uh, these these are all uh, soft pastels. And then in the other one, in the, the King, King Louis, we've got some beautiful bold colors. I just thought that was the sweetest thing. Uh, so this is kind of more like a, a retro or vintage version of a sewing kit. So yeah, they're, they're just so adorable. Tiny little, this is maybe, this is not even two centimeters. This is more like half an inch. Uh, really, really sweet. And um, so thank you so much. That was really, that was really sweet and kind of you. And uh, I'll definitely be putting these to good use. Um, another bit of happy mail that I received is uh, from Kaylee Crosstitch. And if you follow her on Instagram, uh, you'll be familiar with uh, the hashtag that she's been promoting. This sweet little card. Isn't that adorable? It's um, this reminds me of the doodle art. Uh, yeah, I'm dating myself here. Um, <laughs> reminds me of the doodle art. So even though it has some colors, it's it's like you can kind of fill in the rest if you want. And uh, oh, anyway, back to back to Instagram. Um, try tiny stitching is a hashtag that uh, that she's been using, and she was really kind enough to send me uh, things suitable for very tiny stitching. And look at this. I don't know if you can see here, maybe hold it on to the back of a card. Look how fine those threads are. Really, it's they're even finer than sewing threads. Uh, these are um, Invisifil, I think. Yeah, these are uh, Invisifil. And uh, she sent me, oh, beautiful almond m and one as well. And uh, some really charming um, Floss drops. Here we go. Kaylee cross stitch. And some linen. Uh, some 56 count, uh, some 56 count fabric uh, that I can try tiny stitching on. So I think I think for these for these colors, there might be a quirky Quaker uh, that I'd be uh, tempted to try. And, uh, you know, it has enough detail, but not too much that is going to get lost in such a small or such a high thread count. So uh, keep an eye out for 
what I'm going to do with the hashtag try tiny stitching. So thank you, Kaylee. Thank you so much. Uh, I was actually, uh, I caught Michelle Bendy in her floss tube and uh, I see she got, um, she also received a package from you. Uh, so we're all going to be trying a tiny stitching. Thank you. So that, that was my happy mail. Other happy mail, um, which is thanks to me, and we're going to call it Hall, was um, I, I'll just show you a few things here that, that I picked up. Um, you know, Instagram is an awesome place to find and discover new designers and creators and crafters. And I've, I found one, I, I don't know if it just showed up in my feed or if someone else shared, um, a post about it, but, uh, I think her name is Cheryl. I think it's Cheryl. Um, her Instagram and business, it's a uh, chapel, Chapel View Crafts. She's out of the UK and, oh, here's, here's her business card. Chapel View Crafts. And if you look at this, this is exactly what she does. Uh, in polymer clay, she does the sweetest little British confections and treats. Uh, it's, it's just some of the most adorable things that I've seen. Um, I think she might be a knitter because she does some stitch markers and uh, she does some needle minders, uh, some little dangles and charms and and I, I couldn't resist. So I, I had to treat myself and uh, I'll show you that this is what sold me at first. Look, it was a magnetic needle minder. Look at this. It's like a little afternoon tea treat. You know what? I'm going to take it out of the plastic here. So made out of polymer clay. It's It's got a magnet on the back with a little button to put. How sweet is that? Well, I'll get it right set up. It's a little Battenberg cake, a little slice of cake, a little jammy biscuit on a on a white platter. And uh, I just absolutely fell in love with that. So, and I couldn't stop with one. I, I had to pick up another. And uh, I, I'm gonna take this out of the plastic as well. So this is my little sweet treats and this is my savory. Look at that. And the sweetest thing. It's a cheese. It's a cheese platter. It's a cheese platter. Um, eat them, add them, breathe. There's an apple. Roquefort. Uh, really, really, really charming. I I just really fell in love with these, and uh, I'm definitely gonna enjoy using them. And uh, oh yeah, a little um, Battenberg cake needle minder. Really, really sweet. Uh, we were talking about, I, w I was texting her, of course, messaging her and saying how much I love her stuff. And we were talking about um, thread counters, how it's become kind of my new obsession is these sort of thread counting pins. And uh, and look what she, look what she gave me. It's a little lemon. How are we doing there? There you go. It's a little slice of lemon cake as a, as a counting pin. So Thank you so much. Thank you so for so much for the bonus. And uh, thank you for introducing me to the world of your uh, polymer clay. Thanks. Another thing I, I picked up is, uh, I, I'm sure you might've heard of uh, Alibaba or AliExpress. And uh, yeah, I always like looking at, at what they have on offer. Uh, the, the disadvantage with them um, is the, the length of time it takes between ordering and receiving something. So you kind of lose that sort of instant or semi-instant gratification because something might show up a month or maybe two after you purchase it. And I, I actually forgot I bought these. Uh, it's a little cylinder of uh, 30 
cross stitch needles. They're like blunt, blunt tip tapestry needles. These are size 26. They have um, gold coating around the eye. And I thought, you know what, the price, <laughs> The, the, the price was insane. I mean, it was maybe two, maybe three dollars Canadian for a little container of 30 of them. And the, the reason I bought these, I was actually very curious to see how they performed in contrast to the more expensive needles that are available on the market. And so I've been using this for... Um, what am I using it for? The Gay Agenda Stitch Project. And you know what? It's fine. It's doing fine, no problem at all. It's not fraying the the thread at all. Uh, it's easy to thread. It has a big eye, and uh, yeah, these are. So I think these are the kind of needles that people include when um, you know makers are are creating kits or packages, and and it includes a needle. So I suspect that these are the kind of needles that they're including, and you know what, they do the job. What else? Oh, this is a nice one. Speaking of uh, delayed gratification, uh, this is an item that I ordered uh, quite some time ago. It's uh, Owl Forest Embroidery, and I ordered it a uh, very, very beginning of March. And um, and it took it took March. April, May. Yeah, it took almost three months uh, to get here, obviously, uh, with the situation happening in Russia and Ukraine um, still going on. I, I, I mean, I, I can't believe that it's still going on after after all this time. And it doesn't look like there's an end in sight, unfortunately. But I'm happy to support the makers. And um I love the stuff that uh, the woman at Our Owl, Owl Forest does. So I don't know if any of you have ordered a kit from her before. So I thought maybe this would be a good time to show you what's inside it. Uh, so this one is um, called King Thistle. And inside it includes everything you really need. It's got this beautiful little brochure now what I really liked about this inside is uh, she has, so so they do um, hand dyed uh, variegated flosses as well. Here, I'll, I'll show you. These, these are the flosses that, that came in the kit and uh, they're worth taking out of the pack. Yeah, these are, these are the flosses that came in the kit. And uh, each one comes attached to a little bobbin card with the symbol on it, which is really sweet. Um, so beautiful variegated hand dyed flosses. Uh, these, I believe these are on a DMC base. And in this brochure, in this little leaflet that she included, it um, shows you how to cross stitch with hand dyed variegated threads. And I've never, I've never seen this before. And she actually gives you examples of, uh, I, I think it's okay to show this, right? I mean, I'm not showing a chart here, um, but I will fold it up. She gives you an example of two different kinds of variegated threads sorry, two different colors, and then the different effects that you can achieve based on how you stitch with it. So she tells you cross-stitching in rows with two threads were pulled from the same direction. Um, so the two threads have their colors matching all the way down um, versus pulled in opposite direction. So you're actually blending the colors. And so she gives you examples of each of the different ways that you can use the variegated flosses. And it, it's something that I thought about, but I never really put into practice. So it was really nice to see to see kind of the effects that you could achieve and, and how different they vary um, based on the way that you use it. So so thank you. The, uh, the other item, oh, King Thistle, um, it came with a needle minder. There we are. Beautiful little some needle minder and the needle as well and it came with 
the linen. And did I remember what kind of linen it was that I ordered? Uh, eight colors. Oh, I said Belfast, Belfast linen. So it's a 32 count by Zweigart. And uh, it also included a Krynic, um, a Krynic metal, metallic thread as well because of uh, the crowns. And, uh, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to stitching this. I actually had my eye on it for quite some time. So uh, keep an eye out for this. I don't know if I can consider this a, a new start yet. Maybe we'll call it um, upcoming projects or plans. That, that might be a good idea. Uh, another another item I actually ordered from her, and this might tie into that other thing I was showing you earlier, was a beautiful scissors fob. You know, I'm gonna hold it up against this. Look at that! Isn't that sweet? I've never seen anything quite as adorable as this in in this style. Um, yeah, I, I just fell in love with it. I love the colors, the little motifs. It's got a tree and a deer, um, acorns and leaves. And it actually inspired me. I don't know if we're going to say starting new craft, but it inspired me to try making my own. So uh, what, what you saw earlier, this, this is a little um, ring charm. <laughs> so... You know, sort of that was my little beginning of my introduction um, to the world of uh, floss bling. So, uh, yeah, that was, it was really fun to make. And my scissors charms. Oh, excuse me. Oh, how many of you watch uh, Nicola Parkman and, and her floss tube, uh, Hands Across the Sea? Uh, one of her more recent ones, she showed off the way she displays her scissors in this beautiful wooden um, domed frog and uh, with holes in it. And so this is this is my my display or more my stash of scissors. And uh, you know, it's not it's not quite as nice as hers, but you know, we can dream, right? Uh, so here's. Here's my fob that I created, my scissors charm. Yeah. It's sort of antique silver. It's got a dragonfly, little dangly turquoise and uh, silver um, glass beads, uh, solid metal beads, and little embellishments. I'm, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. It, Of course, it took me far too long than it probably should have. It felt like it was all thumbs. And uh, doing the tiny bending of the metal, it, uh, <laughs> you know, it was quite a bit of work, but I'm, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. So yeah, who knows, maybe you'll see uh, some more of those in, in our future here. Oh, and the dish that I'm using, um, my scissors, my scissors bowl, uh, I, I've done pottery in the past, and uh, that this was another happy mistake here. Um, it, it was not supposed to look like this, and uh, it turned out really fun, really fine. I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm really quite delighted and pleased with uh, with the way that it turned out. So, yeah. So my scissors are calling it home for now. Uh, something, something else. This, this may actually be hull that uh, that transitions into kind of uh, plans and speaking of stitch alongs this is another stitch along it's called a killer font stitch along killer font stitch along and this is by a bit stitches uh, you can see them on instagram and uh the hashtag that they're using for this is a killer sal and it's a ransom note magazine letter font and i've not stitched anything like this before i don't have anything like this i i wasn't sure as a as a stitching project if this would appeal to me but i love fonts i i do have a weakness for 
for fonts and letters and alphabets. I mean, hence 101 alphabets, right? But, uh, but when I saw this, I thought, yeah, I, I have to give this a try. And uh, what, what I particularly liked too was the, the fabric that they stitched it on. It was a, a hand dyed, or, or should I say hand splattered Ada um, by uh, an it's a Etsy account, a Curious Twist. And, uh, and um, it is based out of the UK. And so of course I, I had to order a piece of that. Um, I'll, I'll probably wait until that fabric comes in before I start stitching that. But yeah, I think this will, maybe you'll see this uh, showing up as a new start on my next, on my next video. So uh, killer font, stitch along. <laughs> I mean, it, it does make me laugh. And uh, they give you all kinds of recommendations or variations for uh, different letters and mixing up the colors and the font styles and uh, very clever. Um, it also included if you if you signed up early, you got this bonus uh, live, laugh, run uh, chart as well. So yeah, so that was cute. So I think I've kind of come. Oh, you know what? I've got um, so, you know, what? I'm going to start a segment and we're going to call it uh, Crafty Corner. And uh, this is kind of inspired by Chris Crosstitch. He's one of my all time favorite floss tubers. He's just has the, the kindest, sweetest, biggest soul. Um, he I love the, the charities that he supports and uh, and uh, yeah, he just seems like such, such a beautiful man. And um, you know, I, I watch his floss tube videos and I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is me. Like I'm, I'm watching me. I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we've got kind of the hair, uh, completely different upbringings, but uh, a lot of similarities in many regards. And I think especially as his toy chest and, you know, darn you for stealing that, well, stealing that idea. Darn you for, for beating me to the punch with that idea because uh, I love toys too and vintage toys. And uh, I, I do have a few of my own from, from my own childhood. Um, maybe maybe I'll, I'll share it. I don't know if Chris has talked about those yet as well. But anyways, all this to say, he's got a toy chest segment of his floss tube and uh, I'm gonna have a crafty corner. So in my crafty corner, this, this is what we're going to talk about today. And uh, I think if you stitch, you've got a needle minder or a needle keeper, um, needle nanny, whatever you want to call it. And I, I have a fair share of them and, and they're fun to collect. They're not expensive and you can even make your own. And uh, the, the problem, well, the problem, the I had is how do you display them? Because they're really nice. If you're not using them on a project, like, do you want to just have them tucked away in some bin somewhere? I know some people have um, things like cookie sheets, uh, you know, like metal bakeware that they'll mount on the wall. And it's just kind of like a magnetic um, bulletin board in a way where they keep their their needle miners or people use them as frig fridge magnets. And I, I happened to find this tin that I had, one of those things you put away and you don't know what you're going to use it for. And I thought that this would be a cute, <laughs> this is a cute way to get some use out of the tin. Uh, so I keep, I keep my, uh, some of my needles in here and, uh, well, there's that other suju that I was telling you about before. And uh, so I keep my needles in here and I keep my needle miners on top. And I mean, to call it a craft, I mean, it's hardly a craft. It's maybe it's a, a best new thing. Thanks Michelle for that. Uh, so yeah, I guess this is my best new thing is, uh, is uh, using a tin to display my needle minders. But if, if I do want to bring this segment back to crafting, then you know what? Then I will say that this is my craft. <laughs> this is my craft is making some ring bling. Um, this qualifies, right? This is a craft. It's not, it's stitching adjunct, sort of adjacent, but it's not doing actual stitching. So we're going to call making these um, stitchy jewelry my craft for the day. All right, uh, I think I think we've come to the end of my pile, 
and we've come to the end of this video. So uh, no giveaways today. So maybe the next one is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I say I'm not about the numbers. Sometimes we're about the numbers um, for me. I'm just happy that you're here and and watching me and sharing sharing this with me. Um, I'm at almost 2,000 subscribers, and I'm so grateful for that. And maybe if I if I hit that 2,000 mark, I mean that's a pretty big milestone. Maybe I'll do. Um, a couple of different giveaways and again something to keep in mind for the next video so we've got that to look forward to um you'll have some updates on some projects that i'm going to start some projects i'm going to finish and oh i've got quite a mess around me here anyways thank you for tuning in and uh, thank you for inviting me into your home and sharing a bit of my crafty activities with you and i guess until the next video take care be well happy stitching and um see you next time